What's up everybody? Good morning. Jason all here with uh, Ride Detroit and Murals in the Market Tours. Uh, here doing our live Saturday tour. Every Saturday we do uh, a live tour where we look at some art around town and sort of we've tweaked it a little bit where I go live every week with a different artist and we get to know them on a different level. Um, it's one of those things that we offer that's a little bit different than anybody else. So I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, we're over uh, in Hamilton Tucker right now in Highland Park, uh, right in front of, in my opinion, possibly uh, the most important mural of, uh, of the times right now um, done by Sidney James over here. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to come by, please do. It's on Hamilton, uh, right off Puritan. Um, come by and check out this powerful mural and see what's going on. And, you know, I just want to preface this mural because, you know, I was just talking about it. You know, this we're talking about Malice Green here um, happened November 5th, 1992. And I tell you, I had actually just graduated high school. And it's pretty crazy because as I was talking about this mural, there were two times in my life where my mom really like you know, needed my attention for me to really understand something. One time was when my, when my father died. She said, Jason, I need to talk to you about something. And it, that was it. She was telling me my father had died. That was it. Any other time, you know, when your mom says, I need you to listen, you just listen. But you know, this is one of those times where my mom really had me listen to her. The other time was when Malice Green died. My mom literally sat me down and she said, Jason, I need you to listen to me. You're 18. I had just graduated high school. She said, Jason, you have to understand something. You are the enemy of the state. You are the hunted. You are out here. They are showing you what they are willing to do to black men publicly. She said, Jason, your life is in danger. You need to understand that. Two times in my life, my mother sat me aside. One time was to talk about this. So today I have Sydney on. She's going to join me in a minute. We're going to talk about this mural. We're going to talk about her other stuff that she's done with murals in the market because she's got, I think, four over there right now. Uh, she is a multiple mural doer. She is a staple of what happens, but she has been all over the world. She's been to L.A. She's even been to Ghana. So we're going to hopefully get into a little bit of that. She should be joining me in a minute. I see everybody joining in. Hello. I would love to wave to everybody. So if I don't wave to you, just know that you are in my heart. Hello, hello, hello. If you have any questions for myself or for Sydney, by all means, send them to me. If I can see them and if I can get to them, I will ask those questions. Also, you can email me at uh, my email, which is jasonh at ACF stores. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's J Hall at acfstores.net. You can email me over there if you want to, um, and we can talk about any of the questions that you have. Also, a little more housekeeping. We do do walking and e-bike mural tours. So if you would like to do an e-bike or a walking mural tour, by all means, go to ridedetroit.com, check out the information, and get yourself booked. Uh, we do this every Saturday. So every Saturday, I'm going to bring you a new guest, and every week this evolves. So next week, um, I got Phil Simpson on, and I'm going to be going live from one of his Smile Detroit murals. And I got some amazing giveaways, and I got the announcement of a Juneteenth ride that's coming up. So stay attuned to everything that's going on. You can also come over and follow me, the Jason Hall, I'm sorry, the Jason of all trades over at... Uh, on my Instagram, the Jason of all trades. I'll make sure you get that information if you want it. Please do add me. Um, and that will have all the other stuff going on. But uh, in a minute, like I said, Cindy should be joining me. And what I'm going to do today, because um, we're not exactly in the market talking about a mural. If you pay attention to my story or the murals in the market story, we'll be posting all of Sydney's other work along with some stuff that we talked about on this. So we're going to talk here and then all day you'll be able to go over to the Jason of all trade story and see some of Sydney's work and murals in the market on their Instagram. We'll post some of Sydney's stuff as well. All right. So as soon as we get Sydney in here, 
uh, we'll get it going. But right now, you can look around and see, you know, so 14 days, Sydney and crew were up here working on the scissor list. They're still here waiting to be picked up. But uh, we are going to talk about this today. Once again, for those who have joined us, welcome to the Murals in the Market Live. Today's guest will be Sydney James, and we're going to be talking to her about her mural as part of Blackout Walls over in Hamilton Tucker. And we're going to talk about the inspiration behind this and the relevancy of the, in the time that we are in right now. I do want to say what's up to Rula, Jesse, and Dan. Murals in the Market, One Times Run. If you want to support some of the artists, go over to One Times Run and check out some of the prints and buy some of their stuff. It's amazing. And that's uh, supporting your artists. So people ask me all the time, how can we show more support for the artists? You can definitely look up their projects. And then you can also go over to uh, the One Times Run and buy some of their prints. And then uh, just uh, spread the word. Hey, Bonnie. Spread the word on murals. Take photos. Make sure you do hashtags. And, uh, oh, well, looks like Sydney's here. Let's see. Sydney, I think you got to hit a join in button. Let me see if I can add you. One second. There you are. All right, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to add names to everything. There you are. What's up? Well, I was, I'm so dingy. I was lingering at your personal page. I'm ridiculous. Well, you know, we're technology uh, challenge. We're going to get this. You know, one of these days we'll get it down, but we're going to yeah. Please. This is what 40s look like. <laughs> thank you for coming on this morning, and thank you for taking the time out with me. Um, I got to get away. I'm a huge fan. You know that. I, I got a fan. <laughs> I'm lucky that I get to out, <laughs> out on this level. But thank you once again for giving me the access to. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, no. Let's see if I can get this. Um, you have been doing some amazingly Stuff for a long time in this city. Um, every time you do something, it has it says something. A lot of times when I give tours, people will ask me, they'll say, well, what does this mean and what does this mean? And you're one of the artists that I say, there's always a meaning behind what you do. Mm -hmm. Well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, and you're doing. So before we get into that, let's, I like to always start because People don't know where you got your start. You know, I read up and I get to talk and I get to do a little bit of research, but tell the people where you got your start. So I've been, uh, I've been drawing since I was three. Um, and I, I, I've been taking classes, extension classes at CCS since I was seven. I knew I was going to go to college for creative studies when I was nine for college. So I'm definitely a lifelong artist. But as far as mural painting, like I started, my beginnings were commercial art. So advertising, illustration. Um, in 2004, I moved to Los Angeles um, and I ended up getting a job with a, a television show, Lincoln Heights. And I was the ghost artist for that show. So the one of the lead characters um, on the show was... Uh, a prodigal artist um, and all of the artwork wa was mine so even guest artists that would appear on the show I did the work for them too so that really helped with the transition from my commercial art um, to my fine art practice and in 2011 I moved back home I had done a few community projects with Halima Cassells and eventually that turned into mural painting after the first murals in the market it kind of said I started getting commercial work like a month later. Right. So, and that was 2015. So, yeah, I've been a, a fine art muralist for five years now. 
So when you talk about, so murals in the market was like a launch point for you. Cause I tell that for, to a lot of people too. Not necessarily. Um, Cause actually a month or just two weeks prior to murals in the market, I, I was out in LA painting a, a commercial mural. Damn. So maybe my story is skewed. Cause I did just come off of a job like in LA painting a big ass wall. It was indoors though. And it was for a business like two weeks before murals in the market. I forgot all about that, but yeah, <laughs> I guess it was just the right time. Okay, so what was your first mural in Murals in the Market? It was the one, it was called Live from Detroit, um, Grind's Live from Detroit, because Grind is my is my personal brand, Girl Raised in Detroit, um, but I made it look like the original Vibe or magazine cover with the uh, Death Row, with yep. Suge Knight, Dr. Dre. Snoop Dogg and Tupac, except I painted myself as Shug, because it's my painting. And then Rashad, <laughs> Rashawn Rucker, Simon Sawyer, and Tiff Massey. Okay. And uh, that was back in 2015. And I and it really the piece was um because it did it does mean something. It was the first murals in the market, 25 international national artists were being flown in, and it was gonna be 25 local artists here. Um, like to take over Easter Market with these walls. And at that time, I really didn't know p mural painting was a thing thing. Like, I knew people painted murals, but I didn't know, like, it was a thing thing. And, but all of the artists, especially that year, like the Skew Ones, the, uh, the Rones from, they, because the Skew is from New Zealand, Roan is from Australia. Um, then you had the Miss Van and Kashink. You had we had like four top like international artists here, and it was just all love. It was like the best. If you could pick your favorite days out of art school and pack them into like nine days, that's what that first week was. Like shared information, shared techniques. Because I was still painting. You know, I really am a firm believer. I can paint on any surface I want, but I was still kind of treating it the whole process, like it was a painting in my studio where Ghost Beard and Patch was like, that. they had the wall next next to me. Patch Whiskey was like, no, you need to at least use cans for your fills and you can still use your brush paint, but then you don't have to worry about covering everything because you could do this and da-da-da-da-da. You use this type of cap. And, that, and it was just all love. And even after Murals in the Market, after the second Murals in the Market, I think that's when it really, like, my series, with my walls and my gallery art just took a different turn. But that's because just like now, we're dealing with these like past couple weeks, 2015, 2014, we're kind of, really it's 2015, it's kind of similar because it was over a thousand. Matter of fact, most of the names on the wall are 2015 names, 2014, 2015. Um, it was over, I think a thousand victims of police brutality and murder just in 2014 2015 and that's where my personal work took a turn because right. um, that was the year you know sandra bland and then just little microaggressions micro well not it's micro considering they could kill people but against like the students and the young girl at the pool party, you know, body slamming, pulling braids, knees and backs, shit like that. That's when my, my work really took a turn. So have you done anything since then that really hasn't, I mean, has just been like whimsical or do you really try to focus on finding projects that are of this caliber? Um, and well, this is the first wall. The wall you're in front of is the first of its kind for me. Because um, I don't do memorial murals for uh, several reasons. The main is I refuse to capitalize off of such tragedy. And another reason is like if like I don't want to be I think sometimes like if, if you paint, if I paint if I focus on death all the time or that, per it's not enough walls. If we just throw up tribute every time, like, look at that. That's a thousand names. That would be a thousand different walls. I think it was more impactful this way. So you can really see like 
the names of all of these people. But th like I said, this one is the first time I ever done something like this. So, but my underlying message in the other work that I'm doing, um, that I've done, really focuses on black women and how we're supporters of the conversation. We're head, we're front runners when it comes to supporting these conversations, but we're not the names spoken in the conversation. Like you might hear about a Sandra Bland, but you see Breonna Taylor's murders. They still have, they still go to work every day. They still cops. You know, so it's that's why I like in my in my other the rest of my body of work, including the walls. I I tend to focus on women. Yes, yes. So your mural that's on the Dequinder cut, and I know people can't see it, but of the black girl. Uh, mm -hmm is easily, in my opinion, one of the most dynamic pieces, not because only because of the color, but the way it crawls over the Dequinder cut. Mm -hmm. the behind that? So that's also a part of the overlying series, Appropriated, Not Appreciated. So all of my work, that's what it's titled, Appropriated, um, Not Appreciated, all funds under that umbrella. And really, Appropriated, Not Appreciated speaks on the state of Black women, Everybody wants black girl attributes. Nobody wants black girl problems. And so, and nobody wants to talk about those issues. Like, and really appropriation is erasure. It's like taking cool shit, but not giving credit. It's like plagiarism, but it's also erasure because I'm erasing the original author, not giving them, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? It's so many, it's so many levels, right? Uh, and it really and 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 nobody really talks about the plight. Like the black women, and I am a black woman. We're like the doormats of the doormats, and and that's not a good feeling. And so long have people been painting images of us as things. Like when that's why I always kind of kind of question. Like when people paint black people or paint black women. Like, why are you painting black women? Are you painting us because we're pretty objects or because we're pretty humans? Or are you, cre are you painting our humanity or just painting us as subjects? So I want to paint us as humanity and these grand, flamboyant, large, connected to still Mother Africa. That's why uh, I started integrating those textiles into the pieces because we're all connected. We're all bound. Angela Rye said in, in uh, an interview with the, the Kumo who's on CNN, uh, I want to say last week, I just caught a snippet of it, but she said something like, we're all, I'm bound to these people. Like all of these victims, all of these people, all of the protesters, we are bound by injustice. But I would like to take that, st that saying a step further and just say, Black people, we're just all bound. Is that if you're in, a, if I'm visiting another country and I see another black person, it's not, it might not be a Detroit what up though, but it's going to be like, it's going to be at least a head nod and acknowledge that you exist and I see you. Mm -hmm. Or where are you from? Mm -hmm. Like a girl, I was in Nepal this past December and we were actually flying back home and we, you know, there on the wide bodies, you got to walk up, walk up the stairs and this, this chick from Uganda in line and going up these stairs hit me with the, so where you from? And she was from Uganda. Like, I'm like, I'm from Detroit. Where you from? <laughs> I'm from Uganda. And it, it was just dope. Like, it's not that we're bound by injustice. We're just bound. Right, right. So you're talking about your international travels. You know, I touched on Ghana earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk to us about Ghana. I mean, what was that? Experience? Oh, man. You know how... When we were coming up, and I'm sure kids might, uh, this might not be as prevalent, but when we were coming up, it was the African booty scratcher shit, like all of those, like you diss Africans, made fun of how they talk, but we were also giving, receiving messages that Africans don't fuck with us. Like, I've never heard an African actually say it, but I remember somebody saying, oh, Africans call you cotton pickers, so they don't fuck with you. Africans don't like you over there. They don't want you, da 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 And it's not true. That's the biggest lie of, of horrible propaganda ever told to... 
African Americans because the reality is white people don't want us to go home. Imagine if we really just decided to go home. Exactly. Because we got the, we have <laughs> the knowledge of infrastructure and shit over here. We have really the best of both worlds. Like as far as like we if if American black people went home, we can make it be whatever we want it to be. Like we we have the technology, we have the smarts, we have the this, and if we combined what they have over there as one, it would be unstoppable. But they that's but they don't want us to go home. Right, because if we go home. I'm not trying to be that dude, but who is going to do all that stuff? Who's going to mm -hmm. do the kids even? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to do all that stuff that makes America happen? You know right. Saying? To the other day, I'm saying they don't want us doing thinking for ourselves and making mm -hmm. that. Because no. if, if, if that were to happen, it would collapse because they don't understand how important we really are. Mm -hmm. Global economy, everything that makes this move. Yep, that's why the protests are so beautiful right now. And they're telling, like, if we're the ones not going to work, y'all not getting shit done. Like, nothing. Right. right. I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's, so it's beautiful there. Like, the food is great. The people are great. Like, and we stayed in the area of Osu. So by, like, day two, of course, you got all the, you know, the people selling stuff and all these regal looking people and looking all fine and everybody just beautiful and loving and the food is made with love and yeah, I think by day two or three, walking the streets, like most of the people selling stuff into our names <laughs> or just, or like the vendors, like we went to the same chicken lady every day. She had like a chicken cart, fresh chicken. She made these and she would fan out the smells of the peppers to like attract you to her booth. Like, she called me. She was like, what day were you born? Because, you know, they give you uh, birthdays. Like, it, the day that you were born, like, the Friday, Monday, Tuesday, if you were born, they give you names. And that's the name she called me. So I was born on a Friday. So every time we approached the, the stand, she would call me Effia. That's my, that's my birthday name. Because I was born on a Friday. And I thought it was dope. But that don't sound like people who don't want us over there to me, right? Right, right. So we are bound. So you have a current project going on in Sierra Leone? No, I did it. That was that happened in January. Oh, that happened. Just, so talk to me about that. So that was through um uh it's called a group called the Fixed Pro Productions. And it was actually um to celebrate Freetown, because Freetown has um, a strong interfaith practice that they do. Of course, they still, like most places on earth, patriarchy is still very, very prevalent, and misogyny is still very, very prevalent. And even the fact that I was painting the wall, because they don't have like a street art scene or a mural scene, although all of the signs are painted, hand-painted, every advertisement, even if it's a person in it, most of the signs over there are hand-painted, but they don't like have like a mural practice there but just the fact that it was me and another local artist Hawa who was painting her first mural I think she was how old did Hawa say she was I think she's 53 painting her very first mural just people passerbys walking like they would say ooh women <gasps> women women and men and children were saying that they were in awe that it was just women out there painting. Wow. Just the act of me painting. Not what I was painting, but the act of me painting was like a huge deal. That is surreal. Mm -hmm. so lines around because on a daily basis, what we do over here, you can't say mm -hmm. it, the freedoms that we have that exist. Oh, yeah. And to hear that women even painting, like we're not mm -hmm. talking about, you know, taking over the country. We're not talking about becoming president. We're talking about women yep. painting. Yep. And you are, a you are a representative from Detroit over mm -hmm. here for women everywhere. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Who knew? 
over the course of the 14 days, did you have a lot of community interaction? I mean, were people coming up all the time? Just Oh, you mean over there? Yeah, what was the feedback? Oh, that wasn't 14 days either. That was, shit, I painted that in a day and a half, two days. <laughs> I thought I read like 14 days. What are you talking about? Okay. Mm -mm. So you really? I, first of all, I've never spent that long painting on anything. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, I think the whole trip, we were there for seven days, maybe eight. So I painted the wall, but I also gave workshops at the a school in one of the, um, on one of, in one of the villages inside of Freetown, the Crew Bay Village. Um, and that was dope because it just shows you, like, literally, we're all bound. So the people who brought me over there, um, the dude is the the dude who created this project. He's from Sweden, so he's a white boy from Sweden, and then another white dude from Canada, right? Um, so and they know him when we go into this village because he helped start the school, or he he used to teach at the school. He doesn't live there anymore because I think he lived there for maybe six months to a year while teaching and starting the school. And then another young white chick from Portugal. So you have these three people and they when they walk onto the village, it's like, Maka, Sarah, they're like almost celebrities, right? These kids, the adults, like everybody's happy to see them. So when the teacher introduces me to the class, I'm like, okay, I'm Sydney. And I wrote my name on the board. I'm Sydney. And he introduced me as Sydney. Like, yes, this is going to be Sydney. And then he introduced like Lamar my guy as a very big man like he wouldn't say his name because he was like what's his name again i was like his name is lamar he was like now i'm going to introduce you to the man with the camera he's a very big man he's a big big man and he just said it but he did introduce me as sydney as soon as i started getting my you know i introduced myself i tell him my name is sydney da 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 you'll be doing this da 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 i was auntie they didn't call me sydney one time auntie just like that. Auntie, come look what I see. Come look what I did. Auntie, 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 auntie. Yeah. Wow. So that we're bound. We're bound. Right. Cause I have you know a, what I mean? A friend of mine, you know, she uh, did some time in South Africa. And she was telling me, she was like, you don't understand. When you go there, they don't connect with you like that. They think you're American. They don't, you know, they won't call you African or African-American. So I've always had this stigma in my mind, like when I go over there, it's going to be more adversarial than loving and, and warming. And to hear that's not it, true. It just makes me want to make that trip even sooner. And I don't know, it might, but even the South Africans that I know over here, that's not true. They're like, when you coming over to South, where, where you going to go to Joburg? You been to Ghana, you been to Sierra Leone, where you going to go to Joburg? So I don't know, but also Sierra, uh, South Africa, I I didn't want to go. I didn't want that to be my first African experience uh, because I see enough white people over here. I don't want my first experience on the continent to be to look just like what the hell I do over here. I want to see blackness and black on black on black and black and more black and some more. Right. That's it. You know. So we were talking you know, about. I, I. So what is the next step for? How do we? move this conversation because as much as we're talking about art, we're having a conversation about really what's happening right now. And that's why I'm bringing the people that I bring together live on this is because they have an understanding of what is going on. What is the next step for us to take as a community to come together and maybe build on this? We still can't, we can't stop protesting. Uh, we can't lose this momentum because now they look businesses and shit. They're looking at this as a trend. They they are. They are. Not even acknowledging. We create all your fucking trends. Every last trend that you have. Okay. Started by somebody black. Or a, a, a person of color. Every last one of your fucking trends. Um, I won't make our deaths. Our murders a trend. We need to fix this shit. It's been well over 400 years. It's time. And I think the world now has time to see, because it's been happening. This shit ain't new. This past two weeks isn't new. But now people had time and space because of COVID to see and pay attention what's really going on. And it's, 
you are forced to acknowledge it. You know what I mean? So we have to change. And really, black people, we've been knew that it was a problem. We've been knew that it was it's something that needs to be fixed. Really, what needs to happen is white people need to check their own. They need to check their racist ass uncles and aunties and whatever. You have to put your own people in check. It ain't our job. It ain't never been our job. They, white people have to be accountable for their own because no, if they pay attention to if if they don't see humanity in us anyway, why the hell would they listen to our woes? Mm -hmm. I say that all the time, and, and I'm glad somebody else can you know they're hearing it from somebody else other than me because I feel like when I say that I'm just beating people down all the time. But yeah, no, start within that culture. We yes. We can't change that. No, it ain't shit we can do because they already look at us. They literally look at us and see lesser than. How the fuck is somebody lesser than supposed to convince somebody who thinks that they're so up here of anything? No, only they only accept real information from their people that they deem to be their peers and shit like that. That's, that's where the real conversation has to change. That's where that's the shit. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's wild right now. I I joke because I, I got all these, you know, white friends that are going through all this stuff right now. Like they're like, Man, I just disowned like five people online, you know, they're like really going through this stuff and I'm like, Well, welcome to the world that well, you know, welcome forever. But like it's crazy how now they you know, I had, and I hate to use that phrase they but how white America is finally seeing how we feel. And a lot of their choices to disown people is a choice, but we didn't mm -hmm. have a choice at all. Right. So, you know, it's wild to really see the, the climate changing, but you're right. We have to keep the pressure on because mm -hmm. the minute, you know, I was joking. Cause look at COVID. Motherfuckers just started like they got sick of it. I'm over it. So I'm going to open back up just cause I'm tired of being in the house. I'm going to be in this restaurant, no mask, no nothing. People literally forget so quickly. I know people who was protesting because they just had work off. You know, they were like, you know, I got COVID off right now, so I'm not really doing nothing else. So yeah. what, what I'm curious to see is now that everybody's back to work, you know, where is that? Is that pressure going to stay on? Are we going to keep bringing that in right. that we had when we had time? Now we have right. time. You know what I'm saying? To make things we happen. Have we have to. My mom will be 72 this year. And I think after just that week long stretch of just murders, she apologized and then the protest started. She, uh, she apologized. She called me like, I'm sorry. Like, I never would imagine that my children would have to go through anything similar to what I've been through. And she was like, I, I keep wrecking my brain trying to think of what could I have done differently that you two wouldn't have to experience these things in your lifetime. And she and she felt like, but it's not on you because we weren't the ones who needed to change. Yeah, I got a six-year-old right now and trying to really, you know, on top of trying to explain to her about COVID, you know, and how she can't see her friends. Now right. start the discussion of, you know, what the safety of her life. And that's right. the reality of this crazy world that we live in right now. Um, right. So this was actually a part of the Blackout Walls project, correct? Well, kind of. So Blackout Walls is something that Thomas Evans, a.k.a. Detour 303, Max Sansing, out of Chicago and myself were developing. Um, we wanted to create like an all black produced mural production. Um, so I just, I wanted to kick off the brand just because I could with this, because this is black and I did just black the shit out of this wall. So, <laughs> uh, so I just really wanted to just introduce the world to the brand. Um, it will be bigger. That was our plans. Uh, COVID did stop like the production of what we were trying to do. Um, Cause I was trying to bring in uh, 
six artists from out of state, like six like wall killers. Max Dancing, Detour 303, High Row, like bring out all of these, you know, W, all these dope ass, because in a lot of these mural spaces, you might just see one of us, maybe two. Like, actually, with this wall here that I did, this was the very first time that I painted alongside more than just one woman of color. You said this is the first time? Mm-hmm. Wow. Is that by design, or that's just the No. One? That's just, like, when I, when I go out of state or whatever, when I'm in these mural festivals, more likely than not, I am the only black female or or one of no, I've only yeah, I've never been a part of a festival with another black female at the same time. Oh, that's not true. Mills in the Market, two thousand eighteen, I think Sabrina Nelson painted. It might have been two. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And all the murals that she's talking about, everybody, I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna go through today. You can go through my story and you'll be able to see all the work from Sydney and all the work from other black women that we're talking about. But you had a chance to actually meet the original uh, person. Oh, yeah. So met Benny White. When I, yeah, Benny White, which I didn't realize was, I mean, I should have, I could have, I was one degree separated with, from him my whole life, I feel like. <laughs> but recently, so when I put up the original sketch that it, the initial sketch that I that I wanted to do this, uh, my boy hit me up like, hey, you know the original painter is my grandfather. And I said, oh my God, can you please bring your grandfather up here on this day? I gave him a specific day because I wanted to make sure it was going to be something worth looking at when he brought him. <laughs> so he brought him on the day, I want to say like day two or three where I had the face and I actually paid him a nod in the in the piece, like in my piece, because on the original, he painted him with black tears streaming down his face. And so the nod I, I painted, um, I carved the tears into his face. So that was my personal nod to Benny White. Wow. But it was just, he's a regal man. He's like, it was definitely being in the presence of a presence, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it was so dope. But how surreal was it that this happened in 1992 and he did his thing and here we are 30 years later. That's yeah. why I decided to do it. That was the case. When I, when I read in the article that his, his mural was demolished and it was the day after George Floyd's murder, uh, I read that his mural, they, it was an article that surfaced um, about the Malice Green case. And what it did, you know, for the for the nation, but for Detroit, for the nation, because of course it was after Rodney King's beating, um, that case and the riots and stuff, and you know Kim Worthy working hard to get the even baby conviction that she did get. Um, that was like it was a win for us. It was a tiny, tiny win, but it was a win, and I think the painting was always for me a symbol of that win and a symbol and a reminder that this this, this shit happens you know what I mean and it's still happening and I always thought that the mural would always be there and it needed to be there so when I read at the end of the article that it was destroyed I I, 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 I just had the thought like hey I, I'm gonna have to I might have to paint this uh, Malice Green mural well, I'm glad we need the symbol I'm glad yep. you did. I, I, I spoke earlier, and this is the most powerful and most important piece that we have in the city right now. Um, thank you. Come by here and really understand the scope of what we're talking about. We're talking about one man and one mural, but we're talking about a, a thousand names on a wall. Of a thousand plus, and that's only really just a year's worth of names. That's what's so crazy about that wall. It doesn't even scratch the surface. <sighs> They've been given, they literally have been getting away with murder. I like murder, murder. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and I don't think people really understand how the, you know, the Malice Green case, 
what I remember was the brutality of it. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't that. It was the first time for me I realized that really they could almost do whatever they want. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, wait a minute, where? And I didn't understand words like due process, but I was like, wait a minute, don't they have to do this and don't they have to do that? And then right. was the first time where I was like, wait a minute, man, like, they could just be have a bad day. Yeah. And so the family reached out to me and I talked to them. And I've been talking to them. Um, those cops that killed him had been patrolling the area for well over a decade. So they had been terrorizing Malice Green and his homies since they were children. Right. They had a nickname in the neighborhood. Starsky and Hutch. And there's a Starsky and Hutch yeah. neighborhood in every city mm -hmm. they want to do to black people. You right. Yep. Right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, you know. Thank you for having me. Before we go, what's up for what's the next steps? What's up for the future? You know, what do you have next? Who knows? The world is my oyster. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I might have something big big, but it ain't fine. Actually, I got a call a phone call this morning. I might have something big big, but I keep you posted. Personally, yeah. you'll, let big. you'll let me know when it goes down and come back on. I, I sure will. Okay, so it's big. Oh. It's potentially big, big. So where can yeah. where can people get a hold of you? Where can they see more of your work uh, outside of murals in the market? Um, I have was well, oh shit. I have probably a good fifteen twenty around the city. Um, the Build Institute is my newest one. Well, outside of the the one you're at right now. Um, I have, uh, oh, I have two in the Under Armour store, one in the Federal Reserve building, one in Corktown that's about to be blocked off because they're building a building so close to it that only the per people on the second floor will be able to enjoy it. Uh, and Long Beach, LA. Wow. Uh, people don't, the Paul, people don't, Ghana. Sierra Leone. They think you're like, I mean, you live here, but they think you are local, but you are, you are <laughs> on to the world now. You know what I'm saying? We can't even hold it. No, I'll be gone. Actually, last year, I didn't do one wall in Detroit, Michigan. Not one. Worcester, Massachusetts, I have a wall. That's, yeah, I have a lot of walls. Okay. Oh, Florida. I have one of them down in Miami at a school. Yeah, I have a lot. Like, go to my Instagram and you'll be able to get the full gambit. And I and I update my Instagram way more. I don't even think I've touched my website in like two years. I'm hor I'm horrible, but I'm gonna work on it. Don't worry about it. Website eventually. Fast anyway. Website. It's all about in <laughs> getting it instantaneously to the people. So don't stress. Right. You're not missing out. Oh yeah, Milwaukee. I have a big one in Milwaukee. Thank you for that one. Yeah, a big one in Milwaukee. Yeah, right. I just let you know, yup. You've been getting mm -hmm. you've been getting a lot of love all day. I mean, you like I said, you are a, a child of the city. We're gonna let you go enjoy. I know you've been working. Go enjoy this beautiful day. Thank, thank you. you. Can't thank you enough. And thanks, murals in the market. Yes, yes. I will definitely and like I said, everybody stay tuned. Go check my Instagram, go check Cindy's Instagram to see all her work. All right, everybody. And when she breaks that big news, I'll have it. All right. Thank you. Talk to you in a minute. Bye. All right, everybody. There you have it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Anybody who knows, every week this gets bigger, this gets better. We go live every single week, 11 a.m. I'm Jason Hall of Ride Detroit. We do uh, e-bike and walking tours. You, I work out of Electric Avenue Bikes, 3613 Woodward. Definitely come by. I got t-shirts right now for 15% off. Come by and get them. This will be posted on the murals in the market all day. You'll be able to go check it out. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everybody stepping by. Remember, next week, Phil Simpson live from Smile Detroit. I got some crazy giveaways. I got a ride coming up that I'm, I, I want to announce it. I'm not saying this for Rick Williams, but it's probably with Rick Williams. Yeah, okay, it is with Rick Williams. So go ahead and holla at me. Stay tuned. Jason of All Trades is my Instagram. Murals in the Market. One Times Run. See you next week.